Hey everybody, welcome back to The Brave and the Boys. I'm your host, Jake, and today for this beautiful December, we're doing my top 10 Marvel reads of the year. So I will say, sadly, I think some of these are out of print, but I have just read a lot less Marvel than I did DC. You guys know I'm a DC fanboy, so I did my best, but these were my 10 favorite Marvel reads of the year. So if you're new to the channel, hello, uh, hit that bell for notifications, like, comment, and subscribe. And I wanna give a huge shout out to our sponsor who helps make all this possible. There, if you're buying one to three books, you can use the code BRAVEBOYS to save $2, or if you're buying four more books, you can save 5% with the code BRAVEBOYSIT. So let's jump into number 10. Deep within a bleak and dismal swamp, hidden beneath its murky waters, lies the headquarters of the most sinister villains of all time, the Legion of Doom. Coming in at number 10, we have the first book that you want to check out if you're going to do a huge Hickvengers readathon. Now, I wasn't able to read all the Hickman books. I'm looking at you, Fantastic Four, Avengers, and Secret Wars. But I did read the first one, and that is Secret Warriors. So, what is this story? To give you a quick synopsis, basically, this is a secret team put together by Nick Fury to do jobs when he's ousted from S.H.I.E.L.D., so you have uh, like Madame Hydra as a villain and you have other like crazy characters and like the team that he he develops is super interesting. You have Quake kind of leading it and then you have Ares and some other characters and it's just like it's a wild team. They don't know how to be a team and they're not even supposed to know who their teammates are and you get the Howling Commandos and it's just like a crazy complex storyline that just kept changing and switching like from left to right. So awesome storyline. It's like peak Nick Fury. I've never read Nick Fury and I was a little, you know, like I said, I'm new to Marvel. So for me, it was weird that he didn't look like Samuel L. Jackson, but I guess that's from the Ultimate Universe, which I learned this year. But yeah, this was an awesome story and I definitely want to see how it ties into the other Hickman books, but I haven't checked those out. Those might be on my list next year. Coming in at number nine, we have Miracle Man by, maybe I'll bleep out the writer, you know, because he doesn't want to be named, but yeah, I'll say it, by Alan Moore. And it is an incredible story that I went into blind. The only thing I knew wasn't really about the story, but I knew the history of the character, about how it was started, how he was kind of like a Shazam ripoff, but how it became really popular and how they lost the rights and they battled for the name. So the story revolves around Michael Moran, a middle-aged guy who's married and he's like nothing special, but in like a bank robbery, he remembers the magic word Komodo, which turns him into Miracle Man, which is like Shazam, he's got powers. And he realizes like, oh my God, I used to be a child, I used to be a superhero and I had like Kid Miracle Man, like I'm Kid Omnidog and all these crazy things, but it's such a deep critique of superheroes. If you think Watchmen was a critique of superheroes, this is even like going even further. It has an amazing ending where they change the world. Like what would these godlike people actually do? And it is so interesting to see the two sides of this character, the Miracle Man and Michael go at odds and how they change and transform, how it transforms his family and his life. Excellent story, super gritty. I read it all in one sitting. I mean, I know this book looks like good size, but a lot of it's like half of it's extras and it's incredible. I'd love to read the Neil Gaiman Miracle Man stuff. I have read none of that, but I'm excited to check that out next year. Coming in at number eight, we have one of the funnest books in this series and that is Planet Hulk. So my only knowledge of this was the awesome Thor movie where they kind of do like little bits and pieces of this. Obviously, it's not the same thing, but the story revolves around Bruce Banner or the Hulk going to stop this like sentient satellite and it's a trap and they send him to the planet of, it's supposed to be a paradise planet, but along the way he gets lost and goes to Skaskar, Skaskar, huh? however you pronounce it. And it is just a bombastic gladiator battle from start to finish. Hulk does this massive revolution. He develops an awesome team. He maybe falls in love. And you just get to see a pure unbridled Hulk story of like, like yeah, if you want to, let me just tell you one thing. Does he smash, does he smash things in this book? Yeah, Hulk smashes things in this book. He is a gladiator beast. It's like, I loved gladiator as a kid. This is like Hulk as gladiator. Super sick storyline. You got to read it. I've heard that World War Hulk isn't as good but i'm still excited to check that book out if it ever comes back into print anyways i read this book in one sitting it was working from home that day so maybe i should have been doing work instead of reading but it was an awesome storyline i totally binged it and it's a must read for hulk fans 
Coming in at number seven, we have Darth Vader by Chara Soul. Now this was really hard because I almost had two different Darth Vader Omnis on this list because I read a bunch of Star Wars Omnis this year. If you wanna check out a video of my favorite Star Wars Omnis, you can watch this here. But I have to say that this was my favorite. So where does this take place? This is a post episode three, so a fresh Darth Vader, and you get to see incredible moments, such as like how they change the origin of red lightsabers, how they have to find a Jedi and bleed a kyber crystal. You get incredible stories. I really loved it. Darth Vader is just a menace in here. Like if you've seen that scene at the end of Rogue One where he's just chopping people down, that's like the origin of this Darth Vader. And it was so cool. It was like, I got to read, you know, a Star Wars movie that didn't exist. And it all felt super like in canon and in universe. So I love this storyline. The other Darth Vader by Karen Gillian is also amazing. You have to check that out too. But this one is number seven on my list. And honestly, I could have put several Darth, you know, several Star Wars Omnis on this list, but this is the one that I'm sticking with. And it is awesome. You got to check it out. Do yourself a favor. It's in canon. It's in continuity. Check it out and see how dope Darth Vader is. Coming in at number six, we have the awesome balls to the walls fun Ven Omnibus by Donnie Cates and Ryan Stegman, and I absolutely love this book. It is exhilarating from start to finish. It almost felt like Marvel's version of Death Metal or Dark Knight's Metal, like just a complete explosion of the continuity in the universe. Basically, you find out that Venom is an alien race, as we know of symbiotes, but they have a god named Noel, and there's like Venom dragons, and you just get to see an awesome Eddie Brock storyline. Along the way, he meets this kid who he has a special connection with, and that kid grows and evolves. You get to see awesome moments, awesome storylines. It is incredible, and by the end of it, Eddie Brock is in such an awesome place in the Marvel Universe that it was super cool. Now, this does contain two Marvel events that you can collect in other Omnis. That's the Absolute Carnage event and the King in Black storyline. I felt like I got all I needed to know in this book like i felt like i got enough absolute carnage and enough king and black however if you read it and love it as much as i did and you want to go all in you can get those omnis as well but what i like about this one versus those ones is this is in reading order pure chronological so it's not like just the event at the beginning and the other ones so this is everything that donny cates did on venom it's incredible so much fun you got to read it you got to check it out coming in at number five we have star wars knights of the old republic i mean star wars the old republic so for me, it'll always be Knights of the Old Republic. That was the video game that I fell in love with as a child. It was incredible. It starred Revan and like my favorite Star Wars character ever. Then they came out with the MMORPG Star Wars The Old Republic. So when Disney got the rights from this Dark Horse series, they renamed it to Star Wars The Old Republic. But it is awesome. So it's going to tell the story of Zane Carrick. He's kind of like a bumbling Padawan it's weird like he has terrible luck but then sometimes he gets really lucky so it's like everything just kind of works out for him and i have to be honest i loved it in the beginning and then in the middle that whole like he bumbles and something messes up and then something works out for him started to kind of get a little old and i was like well that's like it's just kind of lazy storytelling but then there's this huge twist that explains everything and it gives it all a purpose and the way it ties in together at the end when you meet a fully realized awesome jedi it, it is incredible so like the the he, i was hooked on this from the very first arc where he gets blamed for the death of other padawans and he's just like he's like a renegade jedi on the run an amazing cast of characters you get to see some characters from the from the video game pop in and it is my favorite star wars omni i have ever read so yes yeah, sadly this one is out of print but I know they came out with some compendiums of it, and I'm sure a reprint will come out someday. It does say Volume 1. I don't know what else would ever be collected in a Volume 2. I don't think there's any more storylines out there, but who knows what they could add in the future. Everyone, when this comes back in print, check out The Old Republic. Don't worry, you're not, you're not seeing double, guys. This is number four and number three on my list. Number three being the Bendis Daredevil, number four being the Brubaker Daredevil. But it's important to talk about these together. So my Obi-Wan Kenobi, or as I call him, Omni-Wan Kenobi, is Omni-Dog. And he helped guide me on my Marvel journey since I was new to the Marvel Universe. And one of the big things he told me was you don't want to start reading the Bendis Daredevil until you have the Brubaker Daredevil. And I am very happy he gave me that advice because even though they're two completely different writers, the way they do the baton pass from the two Bendis Daredevils to the two Brubaker Daredevils 
is perfect. I mean, I love the way they synergistically work together, the way that this has such a crazy cliffhanger at the end, and this picks it up and just ups the ante, so it is awesome. Now, I would love to get the Marvel Knights Omni that predates this, the Kevin Smith stuff. Sadly, that hasn't been in print yet, but honestly, Daredevil is my favorite Marvel hero, and these are two of the best books I've ever read of him, and they had to be number four and number three on my list. If you're looking for an awesome Daredevil storyline, you gotta check these out. I know they are sometimes in print, sometimes out of print. I think you can get some of them. Um, other than the fact that the spines look terrible together, I love these two books, and I think they're perfect to have next to together on the shelf. Coming in at number two was one that I was a little late to the party with, but that is the Brian Michael Bendis Ultimate Spider-Man. Now, this was just the perfect encapsulation of why I love comics. It made me feel like I was a kid watching the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies again, the way it reinvents Spider-Man's origin and his whole sto life story. And it's so fresh and it's so quick. It's like quick to the action. And it was like little like one-off storylines that would then build together. You can see the introduction of like every character. I adored it. Volume 2 I haven't finished yet, and Volume 3 I have on the way. David from OPB sent me a picture of him kissing my copy of Ultimate Spider-Man 3 saying, getting it ready for you, so thank you, Bat Daddy. Um, yeah, Ultimate Spider-Man, loved it. Gonna get number 4, gonna get, gonna get the one that's an event, that's a spoiler to say the event, and gonna get number 5. So I'm excited for all of these. Ultimate Spider-Man is awesome. The Mark Bagley art is awesome. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm just excited to see where this story progresses. I want to read more of the Ultimate Universe. It's an awesome storyline, and I can't wait to keep reading. Let's jump into my number one Marvel Omni of the year. Coming in at number one, we have the absolutely amazing Silver Surfer by Dan Slott with Michael Allred and Laura Allred coloring. It is an unbelievable storyline. I, I, me and Jordan read it at around the same time. We both loved it. We were both talking about it. He finished it a little bit before me and he kept making little references to how it was going to end, but it was an awesome storyline. The way the story goes full circle, it's in the words of Jordan, it's very Doctor Who-esque. I've never watched Doctor Who because I'm not a nerd. This is an incredible story. So basically you have the storyline of Silver Surfer traveling with his companion, Don, and they go to like different universes and different planets and have different adventures and it tells one story but then towards the end you get to see different perspectives and different twists and the story comes completely full circle it is awesome i literally cried it was so good this is one of the best comics i have ever read and i have never read anything like it and i want i wanted more but like it was all there was and it's just like it's just such an incredible tale it it transformed me reading it, and I think everybody needs to check it out. Now, some people aren't a fan of the Michael Allred art. I kind of love Michael Allred, so I'll put some images up of the art, but I think it fit the story so well. I mean, there's one part where you're reading a storyline like backwards and forwards. There's different twists and turns, and it literally shows you the beauty of such a cosmic universe, and it had to be number one on my list. And now let's jump into my final thoughts. And that's gonna bring this video to a close. I hope I helped inspire you to check out some of these 10 awesome Marvel stories. I might have not mentioned it before, but this was the first year I ever bought or collected Marvel comics. And yes, now I have a whole bookshelf, which is crazy. I'm not smart with money. But this was an awesome video, a great way to close out the year. So one more time, I want you guys to like, comment, and subscribe. Ring that bell for notifications. Check out our sponsor, Organic Price Books. There, if you're buying one to three books, you can save $2 with the code BRAVEBOYS. Or if you're buying four or more, you can save 5% with the code BRAVEBOYS. I hope you guys all have an amazing holiday season. I hope you guys have an incredible New Year's. And keep reading and stay brave.